Hey guys, I'm JD Gargano. I'm the creative director for a digital media company called Captivate. In today's video, I'm just going to give you a 30,000 foot view of how we get information from the Google Forms to the Monday board. Here's a quick overview of the steps that this process takes from filling out the form to the Monday board. First, the request form is filled out. There's a script inside that request form that will do three things. First, it pushes the information to a Google spreadsheet. Second, it sends an email to the requester and myself with the information that was put into that request form. This is useful later on if there are special instructions that I can copy and paste them and put them inside the pulse for that project. And lastly, any assets that were uploaded to the form, it will create a folder with the name of the project and upload those assets to that specific project folder. Next in line will be where Zapier comes in. I'll show you how the zaps are set up in Zapier to pull the information from the Google spreadsheet to populate the monday.com board. Lastly, once we're inside Monday, I will show you how the two boards get populated with the information from the request form. Zapier populates two boards that we have set up currently. The first one is a studio request board, and the second one is a high-level overview board. High-level overview is just a really plain board that shows the project name, the date it's due, who's working on the project, and the status of where we are. It also has a project link column, and I'll show you how that works later on. The high-level overview board is a private board that only the studio team has access to. The studio request board is an open board for everybody on the Captivate team. So what we have here is the Captivate studio request form. It's built inside of Google Forms. I'm going to walk you through the request form real quick just to show you how it works. So it asks you some basic information choose today's date. We're going to put the client file and the contract. We're going to give the contract number this. We'll say this is an internal project. We'll give this a $100 value for contract. We do have assets and I'll show you what we do with that later. This information is relevant to us, but this, this will populate the status column that we have set up for this. And I'll show you that once we get into Monday. Uh, Captivate Studio will be needed for the project. Let's just say there was a fee charged. We're going to write a due date here of Wednesday. And this is going to go to air on July 1st. We will put requested by myself. And special instructions. We're going to write none needed. This form allows you to upload assets if you have them. For example, if the client gives us some logo, maybe they give us a brand style guide, the rep can upload that directly to this form, which will populate our Monday board with that information. So for now, we're just gonna choose this logo here. And we'll hit upload. And I'll show you how this all works once we get to that step. And I'm going to submit. Now, when I submit this, it does a couple of things. The first thing it does is it emails the requester and myself a copy of this form so that they have a ticket that they can go through and say, okay, I requested everything I needed. All the form fields are filled out and I didn't forget anything. For me, it gives me more information about this project that I might will have to copy over to our Monday board. For example, if there are special instructions, the special instructions that are on here don't necessarily make it to the update portion of the Monday pulse. So I will take it from the email, copy it and paste it into the actual pulse. The second thing it does, once you hit submit, it will populate a spreadsheet line broken down by columns with all of the information that was just entered into this form. So if we go into the Google spreadsheet, you will see this line here has all of the information that we just entered in. Contract number, the choices that I chose in that drop down section. Here is the array that I chose, the email address that I put in. And then also, this right here, this column, this is the direct link to the folder that that form created with the assets that I uploaded to it. So when you have a file and you click that file upload button, it will create a folder inside of our G drive named whatever the name of the project is. And all of the assets that you upload will go directly into that folder. This link 
is the link that it populates so you can quickly go to those assets. So once that's done, the next step is for Zapier to grab all of that information and push it to our Monday board. I'm not going to go over this in detail. I will do a second video that shows how I set up the zaps, but I'm just going to quickly kind of give you an overview of what is happening with inside Zapier to get the information from that Google spreadsheet to our Monday board. So the first thing that it does is when a new row is created inside of that Google spreadsheet, the zap will trigger. That's the way I have it set up. So if a new request comes in, Zapier checks it every so often. If it sees a new line entered, that's when it'll pull that information. And you'll see here some of the steps inside of this zap. So this is where Zapier will pull the information and create a new pulse inside Studio Requests. The next step is it creates a new pulse on a private board called High Level Overview. Because some of the information that is created inside of Google Spreadsheets, the formatting is a little different than what Monday needs. So inside of Zapier, there are a couple of reformatting triggers that happen to get the information in a way that makes sense to Monday. So for example, the dates. Dates that come across are not in the format that Monday would like. So this action here just reformats the due date into a readable format for Monday that makes sense for the board. So once it reformats it, then we can create the action for Zapier to pull that due date from this reformatted date and populate the board. It does that for our studio request board and it does it for the high level overview board. The next step here, we have the contract number. So the column that we filled out for what is the contract number, Zapier will populate that column as well. Again, here's another date reformatter. It just changes the date format for today's date into something readable for Monday. This trigger will populate the date. This one here is the requested by, so it fills the column in who requested this project. Same thing with uh, dollar values. Zapier will reformat the currency that came in into a readable format for Monday. So it goes in, gets reformatted. The next zap is for that value to be populated onto the Monday board. This one here, this one, this one was a, a beast. This one actually took a lo the longest amount of time to figure this out. The way that Monday and Zapier handles arrays is a little tricky. This is going to take some manual work on your part. You have to reformat an array in a way that Monday will understand. And you don't really know what those numbers coincide with on the array slots for Monday until you trial and error. You literally have to go through each one and see, do they match up? And if not, you have to make your adjustments here. Again, I will get into this a little further in the next video, but just know that this step here is just reformatting the array that I set up into a way Monday understands and populates it correctly with the next step. This step here takes the URL for the pulse that is created on the board, on the studio request board, and it will populate it on a column. I'm going to show you why that's important in a second. It's a step that I added for the high level overview board. It's not necessarily meant to be for the studio request board, but it does populate it on there uh, as well. And I'm going to show you why I do that in a second. So the project URL will go on the studio request board and on the high level overview board. This one here reformats the checkbox that I had for do we have assets? Yes or no. Again, it just turns the yes and no into a format that Monday understands. This action here pulls that reformatted information and populates that pulse. This changes the date of the day that it airs. This one here pulls that reformatted and populates the column as well. And then the last action is that Google Drive URL that I showed you before, this step pulls that URL and populates a column on the Monday board. So there are 21 actions in this zap to get the information from the Google spreadsheet onto our Monday board. 
We're going to hop into our Monday board so you can see how that works. So we're on the studio request board and you will see at the very top, we have a bucket of pulses. It is called requests. This is where the new requests come in. And as you can see here, it populated all of the information that I just showed you in the zap contract number, due date, air date, the format that I chose. Do we have assets? So this is what I was talking about when it shows you that it's reformatting a step. It's taking the information, the yes or no, and creating that the symbol that Monday displays. When the job was received, now you can see that there are a couple of columns that I do have to fill out manually. And that's because it's things like who am I assigning the project to, uh, the stage that they're at, the design dates. The, this is what we use. To, we say the design is going to start today and it's going to end three days from now. Uh, so those are things that I usually will set up based on workflow and who is available for a project. Um, so that's not something that can automatically be done. You'll see here it was requested by me. I will manually change the department from the person that sent the request. Here's that contract value. And this is that link that I was telling you about. This link right here is the actual link to this pulse. So this doesn't make sense on this board here but it does make sense in the high level overview and I'll show you that in a second. Here is the column for that Google Drive that I showed you where the assets are. Easily clickable for the designer to just click on this link, opens up the folder right away and they can pull the assets from that. And then we have a couple of other folders here that get filled in along the way. So that is the studio request board. The next board, this is the private board. This is the high level overview board. As you can see here, we have the project names, we've got the due date of the project, the designer it's assigned to, the status, and this right here, here's that project link column that we were just talking about. So what I would normally do is testing automation here, that's the project we just put in, I'm going to assign that to myself, and it's not yet started. When I run my studio meetings during the week, I will go through this list and just to see where everybody is with a the project. There is no information being displayed on these projects. We don't carry conversations on here. There's no information about the actual project itself. This is just a really clean, really minimal board that just shows me the project and who's working on it, when it's due and where we're at. It's all I need to know. If I do want to see more information about the project, for example, I want to see what the files look like, or I want to see conversations that are going on between the designer and the sales rep, or I want to see uh, what a mock looks like or anything that was posted on there. That's where this project link column comes in. Now, if I click on this link, this will take me directly to the pulse for that project. The great thing about that is once a URL is established, it doesn't matter where that pulse lives. It could be in a different board. It could be in a, in a shareable board. It could be in any tree that you move that pulse to. The URL never changes. So wherever that is, it will open up for you. Even if I were to archive this, and I go back into high level overview and click that project link, it will open it up out of the archive link as well. So you can see that this step right here of creating a project link to take me to the actual project was really helpful when I want to get into the granular detail of the project and just to see where we're at with it. So there is still a step that I have to do manually that I don't think that there is going to be uh, a fix for. And there's nothing I can really do about that. Um, I may be able to fill out some information, but it was kind of, uh, it was it was probably a, um, it would be a little bit of a waste of my time to try to figure out how to populate some of that information. Uh, so I just left it alone. I figure if I can get my studio request board filled in and I can get the high level board filled in, the next step is to actually build the project board. Uh, I'm okay with just filling out that one. So where do we do all our work? Where do we follow the process from department to department, keep all our information in check? Well, for that, we would create a shareable board that the sales rep would then be a part of, uh, as well as the designer or anybody else that's involved in the project. This is the one bigger manual part to this whole thing that I do have to still do. So I created a template here. And what I'll do is I will duplicate this board. And I will name it whatever the project name is. So we're going to call this testing automation. And I'll usually leave um, 
a blank after that. The reason why I do that is because we'll add the contract number to this if one wasn't provided to us. Uh, in this case, the contract number was provided and I believe it was one, two, three, four, five. So I'll put the contract number in there as well. This makes it very easily searchable when I go looking for things later on, uh, even after I archive it. If I want to find creative that was based on a contract number, that's why I stick it into the title of the board. So you'll see my workflow that I have set up here. This is the global board at the top here for the project notes and communications. Uh, and then we have the different departments that will need to touch this creative as it moves through its life cycle. We've got studio, traffic, engineering, approvals, and then we archive into the board itself. Uh, we do have a bunch of automations that are set up in this that will also help move it through the life cycle. I will show you this in another video, how I set this up and how we use this as well. But for the sake of this workflow video, um, we do set up a separate board for the actual project and this is where all the work is done. And I just wanted you guys to see that. So there you have it. That is our workflow from Google Form to Google Spreadsheet through Zapier and populate our Monday boards. In the next video, I'll show you how I set up Zapier with all of the zaps to pull the information from the spreadsheet to populate the Monday board. Until then, see you next time.